Well, hello, monkeys. Hey, welcome back to the circus. Kind of see what's going on today. Let me stop messing around with the lights and pow. So, this is what's up. You can see big old Kaiser box today. So, what's going on? Well, if you've been to my lives, you may know what's coming up. Uh, my most recent Kaiser that is this big. Let me give you a give you a little bit of a hand here. It's a fixed blade. <laughs> this is the outline of the Kaiser baby. Azo design fixed blade. We'll go through it. Underneath the plastic tray there is a microfiber cloth and some literature about other knives, your warranty, all of that stuff. Very solid, very classy box. Kaiser knocks it out of the park on a lot of their, not all of it, but a lot of their packaging. Good job there, Kaiser. First step, packaging check. Next step, about the knife itself. Actually, not the knife itself. First, we're going to cover the sheath. <laughs> Okay, now that that nastiness is over with, let's go through why we had to do that. <laughs> but seriously, I mean, I give them, I give them credit. I mean, that is a super secure belt hook. Once you get it on, you got to practically take your belt off. And the innovation here, I mean, I get it. You can go from dangler, you know, the way it was mounted on this. Um, on the other side now but uh, on the other side it was mounted this way so you could go from dangler come on not as easy without a belt attached or about the sheath attached to it but you could go from dangler to like a saber draw or appendix carry like just by rotating I, I get what they were going for and I do give them credit for the innovation it just doesn't work for me. It levitates the sheath out about a half inch away from your body. Um, and it just starts to imprint a lot and look like something it's not. And uh, I don't need that. Plus, it made it impossible for me to... One of the ways I am going to carry this knife is on a pack strap. So, um, this will snap on to a pack strap. You can move that little bar right there that way to account for a narrower pack strap and it will snap on there and then straight out the bottom do the work back in back on your way um, and the other way I will carry a knife this size typically and will carry this one is what I call saber carry so it's cross body draw right hand carried on the left side right hand draw and uh, do your work and get it back in I find a lot secure and a lot easier to mount and dismount than something like scout carry which is behind your back it's just not realistic for me I'm a big boy and not that terribly flexible so um, that's how I'm going to carry this is using this large tech lock type situation but this sheath is amazing otherwise I don't want to detract from that the fact that they included a free attachment method kudos like I said bonus points for that bonus points for the innovation attempt I hope you refine it and find a way to make it work that uh, you know that makes it worthwhile for everyone but uh, I, I may try it on another knife further down the road or something 
but yeah look at the deployment on this if just by grabbing it you go into the right i mean the way it's set up as soon as it snaps off you're good to go the thumb just slides forward and there is quite a bit of jumping here that is perfect it's slightly grippy but it's not going to rip your skin off if you have gloves on it's still going to grip without tearing you apart so it's crowned over on the sides but you got a nice tooth right down the middle I think it might actually work really well as a uh, kind of a file to get some fatwood filings off. We'll see. See, because now that I have the attachment method that I want on here, I can get outside with this. I can EDC this. I can try to at least. Both of those. Get outside and let's take a quick flyby. Billboarding on this side is Kaiser, their logo, 154CM, that is right. This is 154CM steel. Great working stainless steel. And then 1044C2, that is the model number for this. C2 is the JG10, look at that gorgeous JG10. And brush stainless hardware along with that satin finish on the 154 cm <clears throat> excuse me 154 cm stainless blade yeah the 1044 c1 black g10 black hardware black coated 154 cm blade so yeah a murdered out baby <laughs> That's right, in case I haven't mentioned it by now, this is the Kaiser Baby, designed by Azo. That is his logo there. The T8 on this side. Just simple brushed on this side. You can see that lanyard hole there. In case you need it, the only issue I have with any part of this is come on come with me camera we can do it teamwork makes the dream work there we go where they transition from this nicely contoured 3d contoured g10 to the top and bottom here very abrupt but taking it and sanding it down giving it a little bit more of a kerf on that edge would make it even more comfortable. The other issue I have, you may be able to tell, this narrowest point would normally work as one of my favorite features on a knife, which is a middle finger control point. However, when I use it that way, for the, the hard use sort of task, the push cutting things, where my index finger is going to land is not in the choil meant for it. So I have to cheat back a little bit. Nothing too major. It just, it means the ergos are, once again, ever so slightly off from my chubby fingers. I am used to that by now. And this grip is not uncomfortable even slightly. It actually, it's trying to push these three fingers this way and this finger that way, keeping it in a weird tension so I don't feel like I have to white knuckle this to keep a good grip on it. So in an odd way, it kind of works. It just could be a little bit more comfortable. And I think to make it more comfortable would be to move, for me and my chubby fingers, would be to move this narrowest point Back here about a quarter of an inch but still an amazing grip on this knife very secure and very very much just an awesome knife if I haven't mentioned it this is a great knife it is a what I consider a budget knife this knife is $59 if you pay full retail price for it I said this knife is $59 if you're silly enough to pay full retail price for it. I say silly enough 
because there are codes out there. If you buy this at Mojave Outdoors, which is where I bought it, it was on sale for $50 back over the holidays. Like I said, this was the last knife I bought of 2021. So if you watch, it might go on sale, but if this model, this JG10, it's frequently not in, it goes quick. Everybody seems to want this. Everybody loves to mod their JG10 and I get it, totally get it. I am with you. But if you like the murdered out version, it's in right now. It is $59, it's full price right now, but if you use the code Bees Blades, right here, Bees Blades, all capital, all one word, put that in when you're checking out, it'll take 10% off for you. How about that? You're welcome. Thank Bees. You don't need to thank me. I'm not doing anything but telling you about this awesome knife. This thing proved to be an amazing companion knife to my chef's knife, which was several times more expensive than this and worth every penny. I'm not gonna lie, I love that knife. I miss it dearly. It is out with Stevie Wonder Woman right now. He just dropped a video. In fact, I'll put that video up here too. Go check out Stevie Wonder Woman and check out what he had to say about my Dogwood Custom Chef's Knife. This one worked right alongside it. And let me tell you, it proved to be the perfect size. I need a companion knife somewhere in this size. Somewhere in, this blade could be a slight bit longer and have more flat to it, and that would probably make me oh so much happier. But I like this shape overall. So, let's give you some numbers. <laughs> it's ba -ba 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 -ba. Overall blade length, if we go back, see, this this is where numbers and stats start to kind of lie to me. Because this thing has a blade that is nearly four inches long if you go all the way back to the scales. But you have this half inch wide Ricasso here. And I'll explain why I love that Ricasso, but that shouldn't be a part of the blade length. So... In my opinion, you've got a blade length of about three and a half. Just shy of that. You've got a cutting edge of about three and a quarter. And you have a handle length, I'm sure they are going to say, of about three and three quarters inch. While I say you have what I am now going to call a grippable area. Ugh. I hate using air quotes, but to differentiate it from handle length or handle area, a grippable area of roughly four and a quarter inches. Actually, let me line you up here. Four and a quarter inches. So, three and a half inches, three and a quarter inches as far as blade and cuttable length. And then I still say four and a quarter inches of grippable area. I'm staying with it. I did put calipers on this. Blade stock is right at an eighth of an inch. A nicely done. Could it be better? Yeah, I think I, when I take these off to die, I may see if the screws are long enough to put some liners in and uh, kind of chase a little bit thicker handle and give it some more contouring as it comes off down to these flats. So, we'll see if I manage to get that done or not. <laughs> hey, being adventurous. Also trying to be honest. Anyway, there is one knife that for some reason is nearly identical in terms of length. And it's seeming desire to be a crossover knife that does outdoor stuff and EDC. Um, this one doesn't pretend to be a kitchen knife. This one, because of that kind of Bob Lum feel, I, I feel it does want to work in the kitchen, and it does it very well, as I said. But notice the length of the micarta and the length of the G10, nearly identical. <laughs> The length of the exposed steel, nearly identical, although the cutting edge on this, quite a bit smaller. 
um, you've got that big exposed Ricasso. Um, like I say, uh, the beauty of that exposed Ricasso is that all of the different grips you can get on this knife, that becomes your pinch point. So as you lock this down with your middle finger in that narrow point, which at this grip is in exactly the right spot. But this is a kitchen grip. Right along those same lines of how you hold this thing and stabilize your hand to do it. So, but yeah, it wants to be EDC. It wants to be outdoors. I think we're gonna see. And if it wants to be outdoors, it's gonna be contending with the Mora Cans Bowl. And here's one you haven't really seen much of, but it's gonna be getting worked more into the rotation because I haven't touched it since I got it. The Spider Co. Bow River. I've gotta get this thing reviewed. Uh, it's not been used for anything around here except for being a steak knife, and I know it's got more in it than that. But, those are the outdoor knives. Those are the kind of chores this one's going to be doing. Now, to put it in perspective, this was a $50 knife for me, $59 if you pay full retail. This is about a $40 knife, so still in the same area. And this one is a, also about a $40 knife. I think it was $39 when I bought it. Um, it comes with a great sheath with multiple mounting options. This one comes with a great sheath that they included at least one attachment method, but uh, with the right attachment, aftermarket is also a great, great option. This one comes with a loop over leather, very basic sheath, but it fits very well. So um, kudos to it. When you get it in there right, I am not. I am cutting a new channel in that leather. I could feel it. It made me cringe. Um, but yeah, this one's going to be a hard one to displace. And I don't know that one necessarily has this in it. But that's what I've got for you there. Let's take a look at what this would do as far as part of a carry. So, oh, nope. <laughs> Too funny. Oh, man. Uh, let's put the new boy out there. Here's the Alien Knives MIDI DX2. 14C28N G10. A very simple stainless EDC in that kind of mid-size range. And you're going to see just exactly how mid-size. We'll throw... Look at that giant mouse, Ace Riv out there. So this is what this knife would look at as part of an EDC rotation. So classy, meh, it's a little bit wonky, but uh, I think it would work. But that's what I've got for you, at least for today. So if this appeals to you, if you want a knife that definitely works well in the kitchen for chopping up, things and doing tasks, I've always told you, I am not a guy who likes to use folding knives for kitchen tasks all that much. I may slice up the occasional pepper. I may do stuff to get B-roll for you guys. Um, but I prefer a fixed blade for all of that. And this one performed flawlessly in that capacity. So you'll see it for in the future as part of an EDC uh, and probably in some, hopefully, in some outdoor videos where I take you guys outside with me. So keep an eye out for it there, but that's what I've got for you for now. So until I see you again, and I do hope I see you again, stay well, be kind, do good. That's it. This is Grumpy. Me and this baby, we out.